Yo, good evening, good morning, good afternoon, whatever the case may be, wherever you're tuning in from. People are telling me I've got members only stream on. That can't be right. No, I haven't. I haven't. I haven't. Please let me know if you can view the stream um, because that helps. I'm sure I haven't. Um, but um, let me just quickly do this one second. Now, bear with me. Bear with me, guys. It's a great start, isn't it, Z? Yeah, great start, man. <laughs> Lovely start. Uh, give me one second. What's members only? Is it just your subscribers? Yeah, no, no, members only. Subscribe. It should be. It should be. Everyone can chat in here, man. I'm not. I'm not a militant like that. Normally. <laughs> Exclusive. Uh, do you know what I mean? I don't. I'm not. I'm not. I'm, I was thinking. You know, there's no comments already. Normally, the comments be flying. Just give me one second. I'm going to shout the missus to do it. Bear with me, people. Oh. We start again. We start <laughs> again. You're all very welcome to Grizz Khan Daily. And you know what? People are probably thinking, why the late start today? Normally at 7 p.m. But, you know, for certain people, there we go. Now it's off. Now it's, the comments are coming through. You know what? I'm so sorry, guys. Like First, I kept you waiting, and then I didn't let you talk. I'm going on like this North Korean leader here, man. I'm not like that. You lot, you lot know I'm not like that normally. So, yeah, welcome, everyone. Welcome. Yeah, now the chats are coming through. I was, think, I was panicking, you know, Z. I was thinking, what's going uh -huh. on here? Man? People don't want to talk to us. But how <laughs> can people not want to talk to my guest today? The reason why I'm late. The reason why I'm starting at 10 p.m. When you've got a special guest on and you know, you have to beg him for weeks and weeks to come on. You know, we have to adjust the stream according to his freedom, according to when he's available. But we finally got the man, the man himself. Mr. Zishan is in the building. You're most welcome, brother. How are you doing, man? Love to be here. I've been um, waiting. Well, I've been waiting, bro. You're just so busy and hard to get hold of, man. I just, you nah, know, I've just good. been away. I've been I uh -huh. went on holiday, so just been busy, and I was jet lagged for like two, oh, nearly two weeks, man. So where did you go? I uh, went LA and Vegas. <laughs> Bit of a crazy one, but as you do, as you do, you know, as you, you do, do yeah. you know, when you're a big boy like Z, that's what you do, man. LA, Vegas, <laughs> this is what I'm talking about, man. Man like me just went across to Europe, Turkey, you know, and people were like, oh, you're living at large. I was like, I've just gone for Turkey, man, and Paris, man, <laughs> half an hour flight. This man's in LA and Vegas, man. I need to get his levels, man. But, yeah, but man. listen, you're very, very welcome, my brother. Um, people in the chat, oh, I need to give a few shout-outs to new members. Yes, big up yourself, Gersh Sahota, new member. Big up yourself. There's another new member. Of course, how can I not shout-out my brother, none your business, Big up yourselves, people. The link is in the descri description if you want to become a member of a Grizz Khan Ultra. You look, yeah, listen, all these people are asking about news already. Relax, relax. You know I mean, we may, we may want to talk about Love Island for the first half an hour. So relax, <laughs> man. I'm telling you, it's your not all about all the time. No, it's your favorite show because <laughs> we know the real reason. You know what I mean? Um, we're late today, you know? There's rumours that circulating that you're probably auditioning for Love Island next season, so I don't know, man. Can you put those rumours to bed first? Nah, it's, it's still there, man. I might apply. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, you've got the luck, you've got the looks, and you've got the charm, man. You know, what I mean, you can smash those people on Love Island, man. Ain't nothing on you, but listen, uh, people in the chat, there's over 350 euro of you now. Please like the stream before we go any further. Please like the stream before you start asking any questions and want to demand <laughs> answers. So that's all we ask of you. Like the stream. And we're going to talk about all things transfers and football and headlines. And obviously, obviously, you know, Z being a, 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 a red devil. I'm not going to say a red because red's Liverpool, yeah? Just get that straight. You're a red devil, okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. We don't disrespect no one. On our, as, as I guess, we're not about that life, man. We like to respect all our guests. And listen, you're so, so welcome. But Z, man, I want to start off with... I want to start off with your opinions on... Come the end of the season, you guys were in a lot of turmoil in terms of off the pitch, on the pitch, player-wise, players leaking story, rumours. It was just so not... 
befitting of a Man Manchester United, right, situation. You're a big boy club, you're an institution. What was your personal expectation of what needs to be done off the pitch in terms of managerial change, the whole Ralph Ragnick situation? What was your hope and expectation? So la le let's go back to last season, mm. Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. I don't think, I, I think him give, being given a contract after, um, I believe it was the 11 games, his first 11 games in the interim role. I think that decision of giving him a contract and not waiting out till the end of the season is where all all the mistakes started from. I That's agree. why Manchester United you know, are in that position now. They gave a job to a, a living, a, a legend, a legend at Manchester United. They gave him the job on a basis of 11 games when there was big other managers available at the time. And we could have gone until the end of the season and made that decision. The media was putting pressure. You just heard Gary Neville saying, where do you want your statue? This and that. You had Rio Ferdinand pushing it. You had the United fans. We were pushing it on Twitter. Get Ole Gunnar Solskjaer as, um, as a permanent manager. So that's where the on-field issue started because Ole Gunnar Solskjaer was out of his depth. So now, in terms of Manchester United behind the scenes, Ed Woodward has even admitted his time was a failure at the club. Now, now we can see they're trying to change. They're getting in football people. We thought Ralph Ranić would stay in as a consultant role. That All that has just tipped it over the scale a bit as we're, we're confused. We're all wondering what is actually going on. You had a you had one of the best um, directors. Men behind the scene. Yeah, you had probably one of the best equipped persons who's yeah. behind the scene who sorts out the whole structures of clubs. Exactly. A, a you gave him the wrong fucking job, right? You made him yep. a first team coach. <laughs> B, when it was his time to take the proper role and look after, like he done all the dirty work for you guys, right? Yeah. We now all the the rats and the people with the attitude and all that business. You sack him, and then or you let him go. Which one was it? We let him go to Austria. Go. We was let it him go to him or was it his choice? I, I believe it was the board saying, "Yeah, we need to let him go." He was saying he was too honest in press conferences. He was ex exposing the players. We need, he was stating that we need was. ten more players. To, we need ten more players to come in. He was he was ruthless as a, as, as that interim coach. Um, not on the field, off the field. Those press conferences were fun to watch as a Manchester United fan. Um, but I think the way they're going about it now is we we all seen the the pub uh, the pub interview. Uh, oh, wow. With Richard Arnold, which is a shambles in in the first place, um, it, it should never have happened, and then it should never have been recorded and exposed on Twitter. Um, but I think him, firstly, just having a sit down is a change because Manchester United fans have not had open discussions with anyone from the board members um, in like the last ten, eleven years, not once. I think the recent one was. Um, Joel Glazer after the Super League issues. That was the only statement he made and he said he was going to communicate with fans more regularly. And now the first time Manchester United fans have sat down with a CEO of, the, of, of, of our club. It wasn't in proper circumstances, yes. No. Um, it Stuff was said that shouldn't have been said. I believe stuff like the leaks. Um, I, I just don't think Richard, someone of his status, Richard Arnold should be saying those kind of things. Um, it makes you kind of think was Pogba, when Pogba was at the club, he would say things about he wasn't loved at the club. Yeah, you can say he wasn't loved at the club. And then you see these videos of Richard Arnold literally saying the players who have leaked issues have left the club. So it kind of shows it. You'd never see this coming out at Liverpool. You never, you'll never see it coming out at any of the clubs in the Premier League. Your Brighton's, your your Everton have had one of the most shocking seasons of their history, but we haven't seen anything of that sort. So I don't think Manchester United have changed it. I think they are slowly changing the structure. They're making the right appointments. Um, I believe Ten Hag was a crucial, crucial um, appointment.
that he was needed you, to get. Is that, is that the man you wanted? Yeah, let's, that's let's the man. Start from, let's, let's start from a head coach. Yeah. Ralph Ragnick's gone. You need a coach. Obviously, we heard the names being bandied about you know, from from Zidane to, I don't know, what other names were bandied out probably in the mix. Pochettino, you know, the... Pochettino, of course, sorry. Yeah, Zidane, Pochettino. There was even shouts for Graham Potter and all sorts, mm. right? Yeah. But was your, person was your favourite Ten Hag personally, from the start as well? Yeah, personally, I was fixated on ten, getting Ten Hag in, getting someone who's... Why? He's just, he's changed... The philosophy around Ajax, they're, they're, they're now expected to win the league every year. Um, in, it is a tough league, um, I believe, the Dutch league. Um, it's not been dominated by Ajax over the, before Ten Hag was there. PSV have dominated it, even Feyenoord have been up there winning their, winning their leagues. So I think what he's done, he's gone there, he's played his own way, his own system. Um, he loves the technical players. And most importantly, I believe he has discipline. He... He he shows his players what he expects and he demands that from his players. And I don't think Pochettino can can get that out of the current crop players we have at Manchester United just because of how things have developed at PSG. Yes, he's won the league um in a in a poor in a poor league, but I believe his ex his his limitations have been exposed in the Champions League. He did great with Tottenham. Um, but look, we hired Mourinho after his great spells. We hired Louis van Gaal after his great uh, career. And then I believe if we were to hire Pochettino now, it would have been after his peak. His peak for me was Tottenham and exceeding yeah. what he did with Tottenham. So for him, it was great what he did with Tottenham. Yes, he didn't win. But what he did to that team, how he developed... A, a style how how they were playing this the season when Leicester won the league they were playing phenomenal football um, they should have won the league they should have won the league 100 they should have won they, yeah they should have won the league I just I think it was great that we've now got a, a manager who's currently in his prime Eric everyone is talking about Ten Hag we're not getting someone who's already come to the Premier League he's already won trophies or he's already gone on and done amazing things in the Premier League. We're getting someone who's fresh in the Premier League who will hopefully go on to become a success. I agree with you. I think I think it's probably the best um, the best uh, appointment you could have made. I wasn't mm -hmm. sure about Pochettino as well, especially especially with the, the big personalities that you've mm -hmm. got at your club and seeing how he's dealt with them at PSG doesn't bode well. Ten Hag comes in. Um, you obviously, you obviously knew, and every Man United fan was craving for for like changes throughout the squad. So much disharmony, so much disgruntled players, so much players not knowing about their future. So obviously, the biggest high-profile player that was unsure, or pretty much we knew he wasn't going to sign a new contract, was Paul Pogba. Again, was that a decision that you was in favour of? Like in terms of getting out of there, or was you one of those ones? Get try to keep him, and let's build around him. Where where did you stand in that? If if there was someone else, if for example Bruno Fernandez had the qualities and the technical ability of Paul Pogba, I would love for him to stay because Bruno mm -hmm. Fernandez works hard. However, Paul Pogba has been. It's been. It's not been a great six years at Manchester United. It's been. We we expected we expected a lot more. We he joined us as someone who stood there at the podium, um, at, in the FIFA Pro Eleven. Um, that's when we bought him when he had the Mohawk with the blonde. He was yeah. he was at his he was at his best. He was at his best at Juventus, and we wanted that. We wanted to develop into a team that will what Liverpool have become, and we wanted we we thought when we first signed him that it would be built around Pogba. It wasn't. Is that his fault? Yes, that's his fault. But then I also think. A lot of it's to do with the people around him. Mourinho's fault. The board's fault. Not making the right signings. So, I think current, right now, yeah, I think the best decision was for Paul Pogba to leave for himself and for Manchester United. It was getting too toxic. I was at Old Trafford um, when, against when we lost to Liverpool 5-0. Pogba gets sent off. The abuse he was getting on the way out. Oh. Um, 
and there wasn't that many people left in the ground. So, and then the I was also there when he I can't remember, when he got subbed off. I can't remember the game against. He got subbed off, and the chants were "f off Pogba." So it was getting way too toxic between players and fans. And when I think when that happens, he just had to go. We had to cut our ties and just let him let him go on with his career. But um, but there's definitely bad blood there because you see what Richard Arnold's saying um, to fans, and I just thought, I think. Someone has to be the big person. We see what Pogba's saying in documentaries. Um, he's speaking well of Manchester United in documentaries, in his documentary. I watched it myself. Um, fair so, play to him. Fair, fair play, play to him, him. yeah. He could, he could speak absolute rubbish about what he was surrounded with um, at Manchester United. So, I don't know. I think, yeah, best best for both parties, it, club, best for all three parties, club, fan and player, is was for him to leave. <laughs> Look, uh, I've, I've said it before and I'll say it again. And, I'm, and you know, I, I laugh and banter when it's time to laugh and banter at Pogba and United. Be, being our fiercest rivals, that's what we do. Tribalism, mm. you know, Liverpool, yeah. you take the piss out of me, I take the piss yeah. out of you. But we know as a football player, he's a fantastic football player. Getting Amazing. the best out of Pogba, getting the best out of Pogba would have been the ideal scenario. But for whatever reason, whether it's him, whether it's the coaches, whether it's his team... It's a combination of everything. It just didn't work out, and it's and, and it's, it's got to be it's got to be put down as a disastrous signing overall. The way it's happened, you let him go. You, you know, you get him for free. You let him go to Juve. You buy him back for hundred million, and now he's got like, you know, <laughs> it, it reminds me of the Lukaku scenario. We, we may touch on later on the Lukaku yeah, situation. Yeah. Like that's a equally as mad. Like that's madness. What's happened there? But look, Pogba gone. Pog back to Juve. <laughs> Everyone saying, looks like it anyway. What 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 happens to you guys then, from your point of view as a fan? So much holes to fill, so much movement needs to be done. We're only into the second week of the transfer window. Nothing to panic yeah. about, really. But I'm going to tell you from a Liverpool f- f- fan point of view, right? You're laughing. You, no, we're not. No, 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 no. Oh, yeah, no, we're laughing at Man United, <laughs> yeah. But I meant from a fan base point of view, right? Yeah. I swear to you, Liverpool fans are panicking. In, in As Liverpool fans, that we haven't done enough, we're not doing enough. Trust me, we'll get into that later. But from a Man United fan point of view, how are you feeling? Because we see the likes of Arsenal and Spurs seemingly do a lot of work. And they're your rivals right now. You can't you can't expect yeah, yeah. to be looking at Man City and Liverpool. You're looking at Chelsea, Arsenal, Spurs, and you're thinking, okay, Chelsea will get on to, but Arsenal Spurs are doing a lot of work and, and a lot of good work, it seems. Are you worried that you may be left behind or are you confident that what needs to be done will be done under this current regime? Yeah, so I'm confident United will get Ten Hag's targets in. Um, mm-hmm. The budget's there. The the money's there. The the and I think Ten Hag has got the charisma, the 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 pool. Zona buying to to bring those players that he wants to the club. Um, I'm being told Ericsson is one of the first players to be joining Manchester United under Ten Hag, and so hopefully with Frankie De Jong with a verbal agreement reached between both clubs. So if he was to get those two in his two priority signings that we all know of, then it it just shows how good Manchester United are operating so far in the window. But there are definitely other points he needs to address. That centre-back... I was going to say to you, I was going to say to you, if you're suggesting and people bombshell on Grizz Khan TV, Ericsson is, is very likely to be joining Man United. And that's purely down the pull. That's purely down to the pull of Ten Hag, Z. That 100%, yeah. that is his pull because I'm sure Ericsson would have had so many offers from different, different clubs because of free transfer, right? And he's a free great transfer, player. Yeah. And he's proven yeah. himself in terms of his health. And first and foremost, we always all wish him well, of course, that he comes back, you know, f- f- fully, fully fit and healthy. And he's shown that in the season at Brentford. Now, if he's joining Man United, like you're saying, that's a massive thumbs up to Ten Hag because that's solely down to his pull, right? His name. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So, 
that's exactly what I've been told is Tenag has made those two his priority signings. And for Frankie De Jong to also give the nod that he's happy to join, even though he does want to stay at his at his club that he loves. It's his dream club. It was it's his, his dream, dream club. club. When he, remember, when, he joined, when, he, when he joined Barcelona, he, and he even said it, his dream club, he was there. He was there, he once visited New Camp as a kid. Um, so yeah, he it was his dream club and for Frank and for Eric Tenard to again he does have that personality about him where he can attract those kind of players, those um players that he has that he wants in his team, those technical players. And I believe those two getting those two in is fantastic for Manchester United, but it also shows shows us that Ten Hag knows what he wants in the play in his players. I believe at previous windows we were signing different kind of players to play the wrong football. We were signing Sancho. We assumed he would play on the right. I believe 90% of his games were off the left last season. Um, yeah, he was yeah. Best, his best work was done on the left, off the left. Yeah, yeah you're right. Yeah. So it's just a lot of the signings haven't made sense. You could even say Cristiano Ronaldo signing didn't make sense. Yeah, he's I was going to ask you about that. I forgot to ask you about that. At the time, was you yeah. gassed? Or was you yeah. thinking this is a this is a market uh, like this is a for the marketability of the player and the club? This doesn't make sense on the pitch. What did you think? Well, me, I'm the biggest Ronaldo fan in the world. He's my he, he's my go-to yeah. guy. Like I grew up and I watched him tear up the Premier League. He's for me the goat. So when I heard the news, it was I just I knew he would be a success. I thought we would be challenging for the title as probably Man United rivals thought as well. We'd be up there. The pundits thought we would. I'm sure you guys thought we'd probably be challenging more. Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. You finish second. Was... You add you add Varane, Sancho, Ronaldo no. to a t squad that finished second. You, you've yeah. got to push on. Exactly. You have to push on. And yeah, it didn't work out. But I don't think the blame is on Ronaldo. I think, again, it's on signings that have been made on on not the right recruitment. They should have been, like we're seeing with Ten Hag now, the targets are being identified. When we was buying players, we were, we were buying them because, oh, Manchester City want them. Harry Maguire, for example. Manchester City wants? No, let's get Maguire in. Those are the kinds of deals we were chasing. Um... And I'm glad we're finding our own kind of players. For example, um, he, uh, Ten Hag wants Timber in. He wants Eriksen de Jong. Um, so he's even Anthony as well. And I know he's he's getting some interest from Tottenham as well. So those are kind of, those are players that not Manchester City and Liverpool. They're not more or less signing or targeting. But if we heard about who Manchester City wanted, Manchester United would put their uh, their hands in and try to get a deal done. Like what happened was, with Ronaldo? There was, yeah, there was no, there was no structure. Like exactly. you didn't, was you wasn't structure. buying for the weaknesses in the squad. Like I said it, I said it. As soon as you found out you buying Sancho and uh, Sancho and Ronaldo and not a DM, for example, or oh, not a centre back, I was, I was yeah. like, I was like, is this for real? Like there was a big grin and smile on my face because I knew yeah. that's not working, and so it proved, but. The two names that you've said so far, Z, right? You already have you already have Bruno Fernandes at your club, mm. who pretty much you tell me more because this is your club and you know your club far more. But to us on the outside, a lot it would seem that Bruno does like to play Bruno and Van der Beek. You got two players already that I think are probably eights. Just as much as as uh, De Jong and and um, Eriksen or Eriksen can play as a ten. How do you see, like you know, in in terms of positionally, is this what you really need? Because Van der Beek's going to come back, right? Or is there any news of him being sold or anything like that? No, Ten Hag's a big fan. He wants him in the Manchester United squad, um, but. I believe we want the, we want the options there. When Bruno was oh, yes. going through that, we want when Bruno was going through that bad spell last season, towards the end of the last season, or probably the whole of last season. We just had no one to play. We already we already decided. Well, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer decided that Donny Van der Beek wasn't good enough um, in that number ten role. 
Um, so it's just having the options, having the availability of these players. Look, Bruno Fernandes wasn't great last season, but his first his first year and a half, he was outstanding. Um, I believe Bruno Fernandes sees himself as a number 10. Um, I believe he has an ego where he wants to score goals. He wants to provide assists. And I believe he's, he sees himself as a number 10 in those positions so he can do those so and get those numbers. But I like that. I like that he believes in himself. I like that he wants to get goals. It's it's a good thing. But now Ten Hag needs to provide a system for them all to play in. What's and Ten Hag's system? That's what I was going to ask you. What is Ten Hag's? What is his favorite system? So he plays with a four three, four three three, um, and even well, you could say his his defensive midfielders are. I will. I. I would brand them as more deep lying playmakers. I believe, like, if, for example, Manchester United, a lot of Manchester United fans message me saying, so who are the, who's the defensive midfielder we're going out for? And the defensive midfielder Ten Hag is going for is Frankie De Jong. <laughs> he sees okay. him as a deep lying, he sees Frankie De Jong as a deep lying playmaker. That's what he wants. He wants someone in front of the defense to be able to say, okay, I'm the guy in midfield and I want the football. I want to get this football from here and play it to our attackers. Start the attack. We didn't have that with McTominay and Fred. They were wow. hiding behind. They were hiding in midfield. A lot of games, you, a lot of games Manchester United fans would say to you, McTominay especially, um, Maguire would be would have the ball. And as as for example, you see Fabinho in that holding role for Liverpool. He'll make himself available at all times. I don't think McTominay had the confidence to do that. Maybe it was because of his coaching, um, how he was coached into playing. But uh, yeah, what I'm trying to say is Ten Hag wants a... He sees Frankie De Jong as a defensive midfield signing. As someone who can play the ball. Like a quarterback, get that ball, ping, ping, drive with the ball if he needs to. So he sees that in Frankie De Jong. And I don't think a lot of Manchester United fans see that. because no, we're, we're, I didn't see that. I didn't see that as well, yeah. yeah. We're assumed to thinking a lot. Well, the way it's happened over the past few years in the Premier League, especially Conte, for example, being that rough tackler in, in that holding position. I don't think Tenag sees that. I see he he wants deep line playmakers as well as a number ten. So it'll be interesting to see. Um, no, and that, he likes that, that, that yeah. changes the whole. That changes my whole perception of the buyers. Then, then I get it because if he's using or he's trying to, or he wants to use ten. Um, uh, De Jong as the deepest line playmaker, then that definitely frees up Van Der Beek. And then you can see possibly, I, I don't know Z though, but you still can't see Bruno and Eriksen in the same team in that formation to the outside. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But it, it, then, it, then again, what we've seen so far is what Bruno Fernandes has been coached into playing, playing in that number 10 role. Um, with two holding as Fred and McTominay were. Um, I believe Ralph Ranić pushed Fred on to become a, more of a number eight, getting into the box. Uh, he had a few. Uh, he had some amazing games last season, Fred. I'm a big fan of Fred. Um, but yeah, I see Ten Hag playing Frankie De Jong in that holding position. And I think it's a big risk. It's a you massive risk. It's a, it's a massive risk. But Premier so League. Far, yeah. So you're talking so Premier I'm, League, man. This is not this is not this is, yeah. Barcelona on a big big pitch, and you've got time to play. And this is like look at I me, mean, look at Rodri and Fabinho, absolute animals in that position. Animals, yeah. Like De Jong's yeah. the total opposite. Like to yeah, you know, total opposite. I know it's it's a risk that I think Ten Hag's willing to take, but you gotta remember mm -hmm. he's not expected to win the Premier League in his first season. He will lose games, maybe a lot of games, but He's got a, not a free roam at this first year, but he's got Great a philosophy. He, yeah, he's got a year to create his team around that that squad and a and a few obviously incomings. He's got a year now to create what he what he sees in this squad, and I feel like what I'm being told as well is De Jong is the defensive midfield signing that he wants. So when you think of it like that, and then having Ericsson maybe in the eight, Donny or Fred. Then you've got Bruno in the 10 or even Bruno in the 8. Then you have options. You have a variety of options. Even McTominay in the 8. Just it, against Liverpool, for example, you could then play two holding with Frankie, Scott, um, Fred next to De Jong. So it, it'll give him more options. I don't think they'll be 
a defensive midfield signing for Manchester United in terms Ooh, of what we bombshell, bombshell. In terms of what we believe as a defensive midfielder is, yeah, someone who tackles, gets around the pitch. I don't believe so. Um, I believe this is what Ten Hag wants and how he wants to play. Um, fullbacks are a big, a big thing for Ten Hag as well. He likes his fullbacks overlapping, underlapping. So it just depends. Can he get that out of? I, I believe he can't get that out of Wan Bissaka. Um, I believe he can get that out of Luke Shaw. Can he get that out of Diogo Dallo? Will he sign a fullback? Um, again, just questions that need to be answered over, over this transfer window. Uh, shout out to Miz, the other side of the coin. If you haven't subscribed to his channel, go out and check out his channel as well. Even though he's a Chelsea fan, he's a lovely guy. Uh, he, he makes a good point, Z. He says, De Jong is the deepest midfielder. Completely makes sense under the uh, Ten Hag, but you need big boy defenders behind him like Vivian Canate for Liverpool. Mm -hmm. This is very important. That's a very good point because if you've got... Because like the old great Man United teams had the best one-on-one -on -one centre backs. Do you remember Fergie believed in his centre backs being the best one-on-one? -on -one? Just like Klopp believes bring one-on-one -on -one great. Even Pep, Pep believes, you know, leaving two against two at the back. He don't give a shit. You guys are in no position. No, you guys no, are in no, you have got no structure to leave Maguire and Lindelof or, or whoever, even Varane. People are saying, why do I call him Varane? Sorry, Varane. <laughs> okay, I like it. Varane. Sorry. Yeah, I just add a little bit of like it. Keep accent, it. you know, come on, man. Yeah, it's nice. You know, you know, little French, <laughs> yeah. you know what I mean? But look, Varane. <laughs> yeah, Varane, you know what I mean? But you, that's another, so if you're suggesting that De Jong is the, the preferred target to play in that role and then hopefully get the best out of the likes of Fred. McTominay is yet to be seen. I know a lot of my, my Man United uh, fan, uh, friends that support Man United hate him like with a passion. And I keep winding them up and I'm saying, look, he's your Henderson. You need to give him a good <laughs> coach. Right? He's your Jordan Henderson. He'll come good. You just need to give him a good coach, give him a good formation, a good structure. But that remains to be seen, whatever. Fred, De Jong, Eriksen, Bruno, and Van der Beek. That's what you're working with now, basically, right? Mm. In the midfield. To me, that's still weak in terms of from a defensive point of view. But then that, again, depends on your defensive targets. Now, what's cooking there in your centre-back area? Because that's crucial, right? Varane's been struggling. Whether it's injury... Struggling or whether it's form, or whether it's combination of injury form and fucking no coaching, right? And mm -hmm. people moaning left, front, and centre. It's not He's not used to all this shit, right? So he's suffered. Maguire, talk to me. Where, where are you at with Maguire? Because I don't see how he writes off an £80 million centre-back just like that. Or has he got the balls to do something like that? What, what do you think? I think, yeah, I think he's got the balls to do something like that. I think he's... There's... there's there's a reason why he's targeted Julian Timber from Ajax, players that he trusts. I don't think he trusts Harry Maguire. I don't think he trusts Rafael Hovaran. Um, even his, he's expressed, well, Manchester United have expressed interest now in Lissandro Martinez and they're trying to hijack that deal of Arsenal. So I believe the fact that he wants a, cent a central defender um, just goes to show he's not confident in those two. And, and you wouldn't be after last year, season. Look, Varane, we expected that Virgil van Dijk um, aura about him where if someone was going one-on-one -on -one against Varane, we thought, no, nah, no chance. Covered. But I, I was... After a few games, I seen why Madrid let him go. I said it to so many Man United fans. I said, you will see why Real Madrid, the greatest club in the world, is let willing, him, yeah. almost... Almost forcing him, like, sweetly, politely, right? Yes. Considering he's a legend of the club, won Champions Leagues and League titles galore, they were kindly, politely saying, no problem, you can go if you want. That that should have been alarm bells for Man United alarm fans. Bells. Exactly. Beginning. Exactly. And it wasn't... Um, but then I don't think the fullbacks have helped. Um, the down... So you, you need that solid four or even five, whatever you're going to play. You need them to believe in themselves. And I just think those players didn't believe in each other. They did, they did. Wan Bissaka didn't have the trust of Lindelof. He didn't have the trust of Iran. Maguire didn't have the trust of his centre-back partnership. Um, I believe it, there's something they can build maybe under Ten Hag, under someone who can coach them into playing a more 
defensive, um, playing out the back, playing together, trusting one another. I think that can be done with Ten Hag. But I think there will be a centre-back signing at Manchester United because I don't think he trusts them as a partnership. Maguire Varane or even Maguire Lindelof. Lindelof, I don't think he trusts them as a partnership. And I think he's been advised by our old interim coach on who to trust and who not to trust. Do you think there's been dialogue? Do you think there's yeah. been yeah, a bit of communication there? Hundred percent, there there has been, and talk of there not being Ten Hag will probably refuse it. Uh, Ralph Rangnick will probably say the same. But the matter of fact is, Ralph Rangnick wanted Ten Hag in that role as the manager, um, and there was definitely discussions during um, towards the end of the season. It's it's interesting hearing this about Man United because. Again, as I said, from a neutral, not neutral, I'm not fucking neutral. <laughs> uh, really, I mean, you can't call a Liverpool fan neutral. But if you try to, to take away the rivalry and the tribalism, I'd say Man United and Chelsea needed the most work in the transfer window. Like, okay, Arsenal, you could say, but I thought Arsenal are a notch below uh, Man United and Chelsea in terms of their development. You'd expect Man United to be higher because of the money they spent, but they spent it awfully. Yeah, your exactly. owners, your owners, it seems like are going to back him again, right? From what you're mm-hmm. telling me as well, that the money's there. The money's there. A centre back, a centre back is vital. I thought you'd go for a more physically dominating centre back than Timber and Lissandro, uh, what's it, Martin. Lissandro Martinez? Yeah. Both for me, both for me. Very quick, nimble, aggressive centre-backs, but not physically dominating. Now, is that the kind of centre-back you would have hoped or are you OK with these two seemingly options that you're going for? Um, if I you're not going to get both of You're going yeah. for one of them, right? I, I think, again, five foot nine, five foot ten, probably max, these guys. Yeah. Premier I mean, Leagues, if you're going for Frankie de Jong as your DM and you're going for these guys as your centre-backs... There's a bit of Arsenal about you, sadly, man. Mm. A bit of- I, understand, I understand what you're trying you to see say. They're, they're, going the technical, they're going more technical players, players that can play with the ball, ball at their feet. But you do need those strong, demanding defenders. And the player I would have signed, I think, was it last year? Was Canate, Liverpool? Was it last year? Yeah, yeah. yeah what, a player. What, a, what a beast. Was he, is he 21, 22 or something? Yeah, yeah, yeah 22 now. An absolute beast, and he's a gem. He's someone that is going to be playing for Liverpool for the next whatever six, seven years. Um, and thirty and, million, and bro. Thirty million. Slip. We could have, and the money that we were paying last year, we could have offered what sixty million and said, "Please give us him," because he is honestly he's on his way to becoming world class. But I do, I do understand having Van Dijk alongside you gives you that calmness, that composure as a young defender, but. You could just see it, even when we was when I was there at Old Trafford, when he was in front of me, you could just see the size of this guy. He's bigger than Van, Van Dyke, ain't he? He's actually bigger than Van Dyke. That's yeah, mad. He's actually bigger when I, than yeah, Van Dyke. When I seen that, so you, you see that in real life, and he, he, look, we're all humans. Whatever striker comes up against Canate Van Dyke, you're gonna be intimidated, right? And it's just natural. But Canate for me. If we were to go back twelve months and he was, if we, so if Canati was available this summer, that would be my first signing as a Manchester United fan. But he's not. Ten Hag is going for more smaller players, more quicker players in that role. So yeah, he. So I'm just proud and happy that he's actually got his own targets, and they're mm. not people that being forced upon him. Yeah, they're forced not upon like him. Lissandro Martinez, Timber. I haven't watched these players. I haven't watched mm. the Dutch league. So he 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 definitely trusts these players. Will he get them in? Will the board get those get those players in for him? Well, he does want them, but I'm just happy that he's not being forced to buy players. Uh, so it does seem there's a slow change slowly t- starting to happen at Manchester United. The centre back area is fair enough. Fullbacks you've you've pretty much touched on. Like your options come the end of the season was Shaw on the left back and uh, the other guy, the Portuguese, Hello. the one you put from. No, no, the other the left back. The left back. Oh, Tellez. Alex Tellez. Tellez and Shaw. Yeah. And then Dallo and uh, Juan Bissaka. On, on Out of those four fullbacks, Z, how many do you see remaining at the club? 
if any, and do you see replacements in terms of the playing style as well? How do you see that panning out, the fullback situation? I think the first name that will remain at Manchester United, and I believe it's because of Ralph Ranić's advice, is Diogo Dalot. Um, I believe he's a big fan. Um, I believe the one person that will most likely leave out of those four is Wan Bissaka. Um, it hasn't been. If it's different when you're watching the game, but when you're in the crowd, that you hear the rumbles when he's on the ball. You're not confident as a as a Man United fan when when he's on the ball. Yeah, when when someone's running towards him, you're confident. But we need to be. We need to develop our teams now. We need to develop our squad. Our fullbacks need to be confident on the ball. We've got one of the best headers now in world football playing for Manchester United, Cristiano Ronaldo. So we need our fullbacks to be getting those crosses in. Yet Dallo has not been great in, in that position. But he's a young kid. He's 21. He, he We see glimpses of his great passes with his left foot, his right foot. So I think for me personally, I would sell wan I'd cut my losses there, whatever we get from 20, 25 million, hopefully, uh, even a loan, loan with a buy option. I would, yeah, cut my losses with wan let him go. I still have belief in Luke Shaw. Um, really? Just, yeah, just because of that season where there was no fans, that NHS season <laughs> where Manchester United were playing great football, he was outstanding. He was just moving through the gears so quickly. He, that a game against Manchester City where he scored out, just outstanding performance. So I still have belief in Luke Shaw and he's given me, as a fan, a reason to believe in him. So for Luke Shaw, I, be I believe he can, one, improve his game under Ten Hag um, and two, become someone who solidifies his place in that Manchester United squad. So I think having Tellers there just to keep him on his toes is great. So I'd keep him there this season. But if we're talking about this summer, one person I would get rid of out of those four fullbacks is Wan Bissaka. Um, we've got a shout here apparently that David David Raum you've been linked with as well. David Raum Raum Raum, how do you pronounce it? Uh, German player, mad yeah, person, German player. Uh, but want him at City instead of Cucurella. Oh, he's a City fan, so, he'd, so he's obviously saying that he'd prefer mm. him to Cucurella. Seen much of him? I haven't. Um, I usually I haven't seen much of him. And I'm not, yeah, I've not heard much of him in regards to Manchester United, but a lot of the German media are now, are now pushing, this, pushing this transfer, saying it could happen for around £35 million. Um, but I've, I've that heard, I haven't heard much about it. I haven't hmm. seen much about him playing football, so... Um, I couldn't, I couldn't sit here and lie, but yeah, I would. F f I think there's other priorities. I think left back. Let's give Luke Shaw that trust. Look, he broke his leg here at this club, and he came back, and he's been, he's been good. He's been, we can say he's been good. He has been world class. He's been good, but yeah, let's give him that. Let's give him another season to prove himself. Like Marcus Rashford, look, he was. Again, well, this, during that well, season when there was no... Well, it's a, good, it good, it's a good segue into John's super chat. And uh, big up John. He says, Grizz and Z, can you see a route back for Rashford? Because you're talking about priorities, Z, yeah? And you wouldn't have thought, if you go back a season or two, one of the last priorities would have been your attack. Like yeah. Greenwood, Rashford, Martial, you know, even the emergence of Alanga... Ronaldo, it's looking bleak suddenly. We're not yeah. going to touch upon the Greenwood situation, right? Forget that. Yeah. Um, Martial, what's the situation with Martial first? And then if you could give us an opinion on what the situation with Rashford is. I think with Martial, I think he wants, he wants out um, of the club. But I think Ten Hag would like to give it another go just because of his technical ability, his, his work off the ball. And he, he's a good option to have for me, I believe, Anthony Martial. I think he's one of the players at our club that can actually play football. Um, a lot of players can't keep that possession of the ball. I think Martial, he's clinical in link-up plays. Even if he's playing off the left, he can play with a left, good left back. He can... 
a play he could play off the off a, off a, off a defender as a number nine. He's got good hold up play. Look, he hasn't been great for us. Uh, we expected a lot more uh, signing him as one of the young best players in the world. We did expect a lot more, but he's he's still got years of years ahead of him. So anything can change for Anthony Marshall. I think Ten Hag will give him another year. Um, and I think Rashford. I think for me, Marcus Rashford. I'm a big fan of Marcus Rashford. Um, different, more explosive than Anthony Martial playing off that left side. I think he's had it tough on the Solskjaer having to push out to the right. He does not like playing on the right side. Um, I think he's a player that likes to be um, loved and noticed by his coach. He, he wants that feeling of being wanted by his coach. I think if he doesn't get that this season, then I can see him leaving next summer. I think he's looking for He's looking in. He's looking to Ten Hag as someone that can coach him and also be a a figure for him around the club, where who he can talk to about his issues, whatever he has going on in his in his personal life. I knew he had something going on a year or two ago ago with his with his missus. Um, so those kind of things, I think he's a type of person similar to Pogba who needs a arm around arm around the shoulder, and I think he'll get that with Ten Hag, but. The work rate needs to be there. We didn't see enough from Marcus Rashford last season. He wasn't tracking back. We'd see him jogging a lot. I think that needs to be cut out of his game. He's now 26, I believe, coming up to 26. And when you think about it, the years just fly by. It's when it, I think he was 20 when he made his debut oh, against the Europa seems, League. Seems like yesterday when he when he twisted up Skirtle, one of our deadest defenders, and you guys have been talking about it ever since. Like you know, the goal he scored against us, Rashford, you know, like years ago. So no, when you did the chop on Arnold. That's it. And yeah, yeah. And his first, I think it was Trent's debut. I think it might have been one of Trent's first games. I think it was. He, yeah, yeah. Yeah, when he was a kid, you know. But I'm with you. I, I get told by Man United fans, "Oh, you don't know what you're talking about." But I've been a Rashford fan. I don't know why his game, where his game's gone. It's like I'm happy because not to see him do well because of the rival. But the guy for me, whenever I was asked which player would you take from United, I would always say Rashford. Rashford. I'd say Rashford under Klopp. Oh my god! Yeah, like you could see Rashford doing mad things under Klopp in in the system that we play. But he's fallen off so much, and I get why John's asking that because. You're right. The attitude wasn't there, and Ten Hag will want to fix that first. first but maybe yeah. a new coach. But maybe a new coach. Maybe a new atmosphere around the team, squad. Maybe that will automatically revitalize yeah. Rashford. You'd like to think from a Man United point of view, yeah? Yeah, I think you like. But I think there's this new culture in in modern football now where players need that a coach to put their arm around them. It, mm. Tough love. I don't think tough love works with certain players. A lot of the players yeah. nowadays. And I think Rashford, he can't he can't handle the tough love. He needs someone that puts his arm around him and tells him exactly how to play. But the work rate has got to be there for Marcus Rashford from minute one. If it's not there, I'd see Ten Hag shipping him. But um, I hope he stays. I hope he does find his form because there is definitely a talented player in there. The performances I've seen over the last two years with Rashford, three years, there's definitely someone in there that can that can go on to become a player at United. But does it confuse you in terms of your targets again? Because it's very evident, it's very open that you wanted Darwin Nunes as well mm -hmm. from Liverpool. Yeah. That's a striker. So do you think there'll be priorities given to the other positions that we've spoken about in terms of the centre-back for sure, the central yeah. midfield for sure, as opposed to striker being the last of the priorities, would you say? But, but but then again, you was willing to beat us from what I heard from the Liverpool side. You guys actually beat our yeah. bid um, and more money, everything. Uh, but the guy obviously wanted Liverpool ahead of United. But it indicates that you're willing to pay big for a striker. So that's a bit confusing. Like, where's your priorities at? I think, look, I think we do need a striker just because even Ronaldo has said it, has come out in interviews himself saying there needs to be a future at this football club. I am not the future at this football club, his recent interview. He's not the future at this football club. And the fact that he knows that is good. There needs to be someone that can, look, we tried to rely on Cavani last year. That didn't work out great. Yeah, he's old, but we couldn't rely on him. He was injured um, straight after internationals every time. So we do need someone 
Young, someone fresh as a number nine as well to help Ronaldo in those games. Ronaldo will not be playing those Europa League group stage games, I don't think. Um, so, he, ten. I think Darwin Nunes, I think Manchester United were definitely involved. Um, definitely put an offer in. And I just think they just got beat by a, a club who are in a different different way of form right now. So, I think... I think Manchester United will not get a striker in. I just I don't see them getting a striker in just because of the other priorities being that need to be action first. So it just depends on how they how quickly they get this get these deals over the line, the De Jong Eriksson deals over the line, and then they can obviously move on to other other priorities. Um, Salah sends in a super chat. Appreciate the support, my brother. He says next season is a big season for Donny Van Der Beek. That's mm. quite evident, right? He's again a player I rate very highly, had an awful time at United, get shipped out to possibly the other shittiest team around Everton, <laughs> right? It's like, he must have thought, what is going on? Like, this guy is an absolute baller from what we've seen before in mm. his previous time, uh, before his time in the UK. What now? Fully integrated into into Ten Hag's plans and, and, and thoughts? Yeah. I think that one of the first people he spoke to was Donny van der Beek. Um, and I think he's promised him a chance, an opportunity to show himself that he is capable of doing it in the Premier League. And again, I believe Donny van der Beek is one of those players that, again, needs an arm around him, um, needs that love, needs that support and trust from his coach. But it just depends. Will will that be reciprocated? Will Donny van der Beek be trusted by his manager? Um, I after what I seen last season, um, look, he was given some opportunities by Solskjaer, not a lot. After what I seen last season, there's a, I wasn't very optimistic about the future of Donny Van Der Beek at Manchester United. If there was any other coach that came in to Manchester United this summer, if Pochettino came in, would have said no. I, I don't, I don't think there would be a future for Donny. Mm, I mean, Saleh, obviously a big fan. He says, "Are you hopeful that um, Eric Ten Hag can unleash the real?" Uh, Donny van der Beek and Zishan obviously just said that he believes so. He believes that this is probably one of the few coaches that can sort of yeah. get the best out of this 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 player. And there's definitely a player in there. There's no yeah. one who can deny that there's not a player there that he's not talented. Yeah. He ain't got the tools, so to speak. But as I said, man, there's a lot of work seems to be done, and you know, there's no panic stations right now. Prob I mean, I don't know. Is there panic stations in the fan base? What, do you feel as though you need definitely. to get a move on? Yeah, yeah, definitely. I think it's because of the way you guys have acted and the way Manchester City have acted so quickly in the transfer window. Um, it's it's beginning to concern a lot of the Manchester United fans already, even though the window's only been open for two weeks. Um, but the fact is, you guys have bought a €100 million Euro player. Haaland's gone to City. It's obviously caused a shitstorm within the Manchester United fan base. And it will. Uh, it, it, I believe the United fans will be happy at the end of the window because he will get his, he will get his priority signings, I believe. Um, and if that's what Ten Hag wants, now it's up to Ten Hag to go out there and... Identify it all. Yeah, and identify yeah. it all. Have that year where he can build a philosophy at Manchester United again, build a playing style build something that the fan base can actually sit there, watch and be proud of because we haven't been proud of any of these squads that have been developed over, over the last few managers. Look, I can't ever wish you luck in terms of how Man United get on. But, but I can sense, unfortunately, that you've got a good man in place right now. I mean, I agree with everything that you said about Ten Hag. Um, in terms of his aura, in terms of you can tell he's a dis he's a man of discipline. That's exactly man, yeah, right, and that's what you needed. That's what we, um, need. we don't want. We don't want someone smiling around the office. Yeah, you can tell he's a man of discipline. So look, let's see how that pans out. And look, Sport Genius sends in a super chat and he says, "Because if Arsenal sign Tillemans, Jesus, and Rafinha, will they be top four? Big up to you both guys. And this is another thing because as we as we spoke about, all the teams around you." seem to be acting fast. What's your opinions on the way Arsenal are going about it? So we know that they've signed Fabio Vieira. I think Vieira, I think that's going to be announced tomorrow. Now, I know about him because we've scouted him last season and a lot of Liverpool fans wanted him. But we've opted for a younger, 
version, right-footed version in Fabio Cavallio. Now, before people come at me, I get this slightly different. Fabio Vieira is more of a playmaker, more of a David Silva. But we've gone for the Fabio Cavallio and we, and we believe in Harvey Elliott. So we didn't push the Fabio Vieira move further. It looks like Arsenal have got him, right? Now, Arsenal have got a player like, um, what's his name? Odegaard, who's very similar. They're doing yeah. very similar to what we said about Man United. They're buying players that I didn't think were priority, but they're going for him. So, um, Jesus is pretty much done. I know that from my Man City guy. I don't know yeah. nothing from the Arsenal side, but from my Man City guy, he told me last night that Jesus is 100% going to yeah. Arsenal. For Arsenal people, that is something to celebrate. Talk to me about Tielemans and Rafinha. What do you think about these uh, possible moves? Are they what you what you would have thought Arsenal were going for? Tielemans yeah. and Rafinha, what they need? Do you, do you like them as players? I like I like I like Rafinha. I'm not mm -hmm. a big fan of Tielemans. Um, I'm just not a big fan of him. I just believe he's a bit overrated. Um, but it, it goes to show they're going out there. They're going out there spending money, um, and it, it's scary as a Manchester United fan when your rivals are doing that um, and they're being very active in the window. But I think those signings, look, they can either make or break you as a manager. And I think... This is make or break for Arteta, 100%. Yeah, I, think, I think if he gets it wrong and they start slipping off around November, de December, we could see the first sacking in the Premier League. I think, but, I think you're spot on. But it's brave. Like we said, it's, it's very brave. Yeah. brave. And these moves are brave because Rafinha was nailed on for Barcelona. The big uh, names. And you, you got to have, you gotta have a way of dealing with these big names. The, the Jesus one, you understand because of his time at Man City. Yeah. Arteta's time at Man City, you can tell think, that yeah. th there's no way he would have gone to Arsenal uh, if Arteta's not the coach, yeah. right? Yeah, exactly. And Tielemans, okay. Tillemans is it around that level? Like Leicester to Arsenal is 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 a is a jump up in quality, but it's not. He's not going to a certified top four team, right? He's going to a team that's going to battle for top six. So Tillemans yeah. kind of makes sense, but again, he's like he's like De Jong in the term of. I thought Arsenal would go for a more certified physical presence, like Basuma. Oh, like, that is a. I think that's. That's a very good signing. I think Conte has moved very quickly there, under the radar. Um, and he's got a very good signing in Basuma there. But, um, yeah, I just think, you look, it's good signing all these players. It gets you excited as a fan. But Arteta needs to understand they're going to be a lot of big personalities now in that changing room. And he, needs, sure. to be able to, he needs to be able to deal with them because these Brazilian players, they're not quiet players. They're very... You know they're very, uh, they've got a big persona about them, so it'll be very hard to control for Arteta. I believe. I think he will be the first manager to get sacked, but we'll wait and see. Jesus, I think, is a great signing. I like that. I love that signing. Yeah, I think, but he's. I I like the fact that Pep Guardiola could trust him off the right as well. I think it just goes to show his, his versatility as a forward. He played a lot of games last season coming up play off the right wing, mm -hmm. which I believe. To do that as someone who's played as a number nine all, all, all your career is outstanding. So I think Jesus and Arteta will work. I think Arsenal and Jesus will work. I think that, that transfer is, is going places. But yeah, Tielemans, I don't know. I think Tielemans, Rafinha, where, where would Saka play? Well, this is it. This is it. There's a, there's a couple more questions that I want to get through. Um, uh, shout out to, to H. Singh. He says, appreciate the support, bro. He says, yes, lads, but will United fans give Ten Hag the time? If the first six months you're miles off next season, these players are toxic and this will take seasons, not windows to fix. I don't see it. You have to give him time, right? We have to. I think, I think the board have changed. Look, you can't give someone time if they lose their first 10 12, 13 games. Something that won't happen. Um, yes, he's going to lose games, but I believe Manchester United board are changing. They give, they're going to give him time. Richard Arnold will be patient with him, and it's not. A, it's this season is for him to develop his personality and show his charisma in this league, so he can go out there, be, make his squad, um, develop a relationship with his players, and also the executives at Manchester United. 
he needs to be able to trust his players below him and the people above him. And I think if that happens in the first season at Manchester United for Ten Hag, we'll go on to see success. If it doesn't, if there's already issues between Ten Hag and the board, or if there's already issues between Ten Hag and the players, then I think we're, it's a recipe for, uh, for disaster. But hopefully, if he gets those players in that he wants, then he'll have the trust. He'll, ha he'll, he'll believe in his board. That way, he can then just focus on the players and get that trust from the players and move on move on uh, game by game. Um, Om Godas. Om Godas. Hopefully, I've said that right. Uh, forgive me if I haven't. It says, Z, news about Cristiano and Mendes meet in, in Portugal. Is there is there a situation developing there? Is there any sort of doubts about his future or something? Yeah, so yeah, so I've reported it um, for quite a while now that there is offers for Cristiano this summer. Okay, really? Um, there is offers. However, and George Mendes has joined up with Ronaldo. I believe it was in Mallorca this weekend. Um, but it's just to see what he where his heads at um, as a player for Manchester United, and I also understand Ten Hag um, put, put the tweet out there yesterday that there was positive talks between Ten Hag and Cristiano Ronaldo last week. Um, just Ten Hag making that personal um, call over to what, the best player that he, he needs to have on board. Um, you have the best player on board, that way you have control of the changing room. So I think for Ten Hag to do that was great a great move from him. Um, and I think if Cristiano, will, I believe as a Manchester United fan, I believe he will stay. But the fact that this offers on the table and the fact that Mendes is speaking to Cristiano directly and flying over and seeing what his what his <laughs> thought process is, I, I think there is something there. But we never know with Cristiano. He decides his own future. Like we've seen at Juventus, Allegri thought he was going to stay. He played the first game of the season. Two days later, there was talk of oh. him going to see. So he literally emptied his locker room and he left. So I think that that can that can easily happen with Ronaldo, a change of mind. So I don't, I don't, I don't know. I I believe as a Manchester United fan, I want him to stay, and I hope he does stay. Um, and I believe the fact that Ten Hag is calling him up about the captaincy armband, about talks around Manchester United and where he sees a future, I believe that there is something there that he will stay. El Drago Eleven, uh, appreciate the support, my brother. He says, Grizz, if Arsenal get Rafinha." And and Salah set to leave at the end of the season, I'd go all in for Saka. <sighs> That's a, I, I've, heard this, I've heard this Saka leaving for City, I've heard Saka leaving for Liverpool. Yeah, I, I, you know, I think there could be something in that. The reason why is because of the way Arsenal are chasing Rafinha. Because yeah. they pretty much play in the same position. They've also bought the Sao Paulo youngster Marquinhos, who's only 19, yeah but obviously for the future as well. And then they got Fab Fabio Vieira, who can play off the left as well, if needs be. I think it would be interesting to see if Saka signs that uh, that new contract that he's not signed yet. And that's key. Yeah, that's you know, key. it all depends on... That's key, man. If he signs that, then, yeah, they'll probably have a big, big clause in there. Contract, it? I'm but hearing, if they so. don't, but if they don't, if he doesn't sign that, They've got a decision to make. They've they've got them, you know, and, and possibly, possibly this chase of Rafinha has got me thinking. Now again, I just speaking to the Man City guy just before I came in live, and he says they're very much like Saka. Man, Man City are very much eyeing up Saka, whether it's yeah. short term or whether it's long term, and you can see the way they're not really bothered about Mares or Sterling to stay. You can see they've got eyes on new players in those positions and I think Saka is 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 a if he leaves I th I'd say he's more nailed on for City than Liverpool because I think we've missed a boat with Saka before Saka signed that deal we made him the best offer before he signed oh, to it? Arsenal yeah we made him the best offer we thought we've got him in the bag but his love for Arsenal he's a boyhood Arsenal fan he wanted to stay at Arsenal otherwise we love Saka yeah, I can see that working Massive fan of Saka, massive yeah. fan of Saka. But I think we've missed the boat now. You never know. Um, you know, the Salah situation is dragging, dragging, dragging. The club, the reason why the club are not entertaining offers for him 
and he said it himself, is because both parties are still hopeful, hopeful of extending. I agree. I agree that the longer it goes, the less chances there is of it. But both yeah. parties are still agreeing that they will sit down again before the start of the season and see what they can uh, see if they can come to an agreement. There was another one. He said, "Z, how many players do you think United will sign?" <laughs> so, that's a, that's a, you could you know, think, as, well, as fans, you could want four or five, right? Uh, what I was told um, is before the start of the season, what I was told is Tenag wants at least five to six players. Will he get that? It's just up to the board and and how how they work and deliver for him. It looks like he's got two in the bag already. Um, so possibly three, possibly four more. Why not? The the windows literally opened two weeks ago. Yeah, exactly. People forget that there's a long way to go yet. And well, I think they, I think there needs to be more signings than five or six. But you can't you can't make ten signings in one transfer window. You just can't do it. So this season he needs to get those signings. He needs to get those signings right. These signings have to be, they have to work for Manchester United. If he doesn't get these signings right, if you don't get your first batch right, then the board won't trust you with your second batch. They'll be more hesitant on getting your your second batch in next summer. And then that's when the issues arise. So he has to get these signings right this summer. Silas sends in a super chat and he says, will City replace Sterling, Jesus, Bernardo if they go? <laughs> I banter City fans and say everyone's talking about Liverpool's perceived players on their contracts, a last year of their contracts, and Mane going. If you deep, if you really analyse it, Sterling wants to go. Yeah. Jesus is gone. Mares wants to go if an offer comes in. Bernardo has openly said he wants to go. He wants to go last season. Yeah. Gundogan undecided, not sure what the situation with him is. Right. Carl Walker, 32 now, getting a lot of injuries, a lot of muscle injuries. And for a player like him, muscle injuries are the last thing you want because he's all about pace and power. Yeah, exactly. They've replaced Haaland. Sorry, they brought in Haaland, who is a certified, certified gunman. No one's going to tell you he's not. No, right? he's different. It'd be foolish, right? But he will still have to adjust to a Pep way of playing. And Pep's way of playing is pretty unique. It's pretty unique because he literally has been playing for a season and a half. Even with Aguero there, he's pr pretty much been playing without Aguero in the last season. Do you remember? He's pretty much yeah, been playing yeah. without a striker. And his yeah. formation, the way he plays, is quite unique. So Haaland will have to get used to it. Alvarez, highly thought of. Everyone's talking about Alvarez, but he still hasn't done anything un unproven in this league. So yeah, I yeah. think I think Sterling, Mares, and Jesus and Bernardo, if they were to all leave, that's pretty huge. Z from uh, the way I look yeah. at it, I can't see them all leaving. I can't see. I, um, can't. I can't see them all leaving. There's no way Pep Guardiola sanctions them to all leave. They're players he's trusted for years now. Trust and look, look, and Jesus is gone. Jesus is gone. Yeah, we can say Jesus is gone. I think the closest Sterling, Chelsea. Big noise. Yeah, big noise. I know I still haven't heard anything concrete about... I know a lot of the the best out there are saying that he's going to Chelsea for 35 million. I think it just depends on when he when he comes back from vacation and actually speaks to his city board and says what they want to do with him. Because Sterling has always expressed that desire to, to leave. Uh, not... not in informal talks or anything, but you've always thought Sterling would be the one. Pep, let's go. Um, but I think he's still a crucial player. You've seen it against Aston Villa, that game that won in the league. He came on, he changed the game. Turned it on, yeah. Exactly. But he's, so, not, but, but he's not signed a new contract, is he? Both no, him and Mahrez yeah. are not signing a him new deal. Mahrez. So there's something going on there. And I think, I think a lot of these players are not signing new deals because Pep Guardiola's deal hasn't been finalised yet. I think when your manager's deal is running out and you're not being told about his future plans, I think that's where issues arise. So players will not commit. Why would you commit to a four or five year contract when it's possibly your last contract? When the guy above you, the guy you speak to on a daily basis about your future, has not committed his contract, has not committed his future to the club. So I think I can't see them all leaving. I can see Bernardo Silva leaving. 
that is more sticking out to me just because of his desire and to leave. Do you know how much? I, and do you know? Do you know how much I rate him? Wow. Yeah. Oh, he's quality. He's he's world class. I hate him. Yeah, he's a he's, rat. Like Liverpool fans, you know he's one. You of remember those... that dribble he didn't get at, at Anfield? I've not seen. Him. I've not seen anyone dribble like that against Liverpool. <laughs> it was unfortunately it was only beaten by Salah with a goal that Salah scored yeah, when he yeah, did yeah. dribble. <laughs> yeah, he but, did. Yeah, but, yeah. But Bernardo Silva, we hate him as a Liverpool fan, yeah. fans, right, as fan base. But my God, he's so good. Yeah, he's world class. Yeah, he's. I mean, he's if he was to leave, good. that would be huge. And you, and you think about it, he's not got the physicality, but he's just that guy who can just you turn can see, it on. You can he's see not, why yeah. you can see why Xavi wants him. Exactly, you can exactly. You, you do use his prime Barcelona. Ain't he? he could easily fit into that Barcelona twenty eleven team. Yeah, so nicely, easily. so nicely. He's, exactly, he's like a he's like a right footed Iniesta. Do you remember how Iniesta used to keep the ball? Like you used Always to think, oh, that's bullying him. Yeah. Pure. That's a wicked example by me, actually. Some of those players you just can't get close to because mentally they're two steps ahead. <laughs> so I, I think remember, Bernardo I Silva is. Yeah, I think he would be a big loss for City, and I think that could that title race. If it is City and Liverpool this season, I think Liverpool will pip towards the Premier League if Bernardo Silva leaves. But we'll see. You never know. Manchester United might be in the title race next year. Yeah, OK. okay <laughs> uh, uh, selection, uh, one of my favourites, always uh, has a go at me. Sometimes has a go at me, actually, but he's still, I still love him. He says, isn't it a bit strange Poole aren't interested in Rafinha, given Salah's current predicament <laughs> or even looking for competition for him? Um, the reason for that... I think there's two reasons for that selection. A, I do believe they're always keeping the option. When a club is run as efficiently and well as Liverpool, just because we don't hear of the names doesn't mean they're not doing the groundwork. Exactly. It, it's not about what we read on Twitter or I may exactly. hear. So if I don't hear of something or someone else who, who gives out information doesn't hear, doesn't mean that there's not happening. It just means that I, don't, I haven't heard anything. There's 100% things going on behind the scenes. Liverpool 100% are not relying on Salah suddenly saying to them in December, you know what, I'm, I'm starting talking to Man City or PSG or whatever. It doesn't work like yeah. that. There's always, always groundwork being done. Just because we don't hear it selection, it doesn't mean there's not things happening. Rafinha, we did have an interest in him last season. We were caught with 60 million. We said thanks, but no thanks. Um, and we went for Diaz instead. For, you know, what a signing. Mm -hmm. But there you go. So, you know what I mean? We didn't want to pay 60 million for him. And now, you know, I believe that in that position, probably the most, probably the most likely, if it was to happen, I don't see it happening, but if it was likely to happen, I've heard is Jared Bowen. That's just my information. Yeah. There may be other information. There may be other people ahead. People were linked with Anthony. I don't ever believe that we, who is an in interest of us, I believe that yeah. Man United are, are pretty much nailed on to get him. But Anthony was linked with Liverpool. Believe that if you want. So there is people that have been linked in that position. Uh, but obviously, you know, well, always appreciate it. What do you think so, of Jared Bowen? I like him a lot. Do you? I, I, I think I like him a lot. Did you, for see those games for, did, did you see those games for England? Did you see anyone, anyone play in that England team? That is the most disgusting coach right there for an England <laughs> player set up there. Put Jared Bowen in a Jurgen Klopp team. My God, he'll cause problems. He's a problem, Jared Bowen. Forget how he plays. Forget his name. Forget his looks. Forget how, where he's playing right now because he's playing with Antonio up there, man, on his own on the break. Yeah, true. It's a different ball game when he's got Trent and Thiago and you know the likes oh, of yeah. Naby and Fabinho looking for him and and Diaz and and you know uh, Salah there. It'll be it'll be a different ball game, but. You know, I I think it'll be very difficult to prize him away from 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 uh, West Ham right now. Um, Alex says, "Big up, Grizz and Z. You will only have to wait till game week three to see De Jong bosh your midfield. Gotta love it. Look, Z is a massive fan um, of of De Jong. I am as well. The only reason I was saying was that if he's playing that lone role, I still got my doubts, Z, about that. Yeah. That'll be a shock to the system for him." 
I think. We'll, we'll see. I think I think Tenag wants to show a bit of his philosophy early on in his Manchester United career. And if he does do that, it's a big risk. But if it pays off, then you never know. <laughs> um, people going on to about the Chelsea situation. Adrian Shake, big up yourself. He says, Grizz, big up. Don't listen to haters. Mourinho gone. Marina gone. Finally, good negotiator. Terrible director of football. And Michael Edwards heavily linked. Probably is what happened. No, my, I can tell you that for a fact. Michael Edwards won't take the Chelsea role. Mar- Marina is the Chelsea director of football, right? So, so the big news of today, we didn't even get a chance to chat on it, was, was, was yeah. the Chelsea the, uh, negotiator stroke director of football. We're not why sure she, what her exact role was. Why is she, ter- why is she deemed terrible? Well, the, 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 the Chelsea people that I speak to talk about her being able to negotiate sales very well. But in terms yeah. of incoming, she's awful, apparently. And she hasn't got any links or connections, and, and they hate her. I saw a lot of Chelsea, big, big Chelsea fans and big Chelsea yeah. accounts that were celebrating That's her. It. So but isn't she it's a, a weird of, one. She's been a part of Chelsea for, what, 10, 11 years now? I couldn't confirm or deny that. If people are in the, sure. Adrian, if you're in the chat, uh, obviously you don't need to send in the super chat. Just let us know if uh, any Chelsea people in the chat. Well, oh, she's been there for a while, and she's been. She's definitely been in the in, in the in the in the in the Roman era. Yeah, so I think it's it's a successful period for Chelsea. Two Champions League. I think I don't, I don't know. I think when you when as a Man United fan, when you see what we've had, uh, we haven't even had a director of football. Um, so when you see that and then you compare it and you see why Chelsea are moaning at each other and why Chelsea fans are upset, you kind what do, of... What, is your, what do you think... Where, where do you think they're at? <coughs> Chelsea. They're in a similar situation to you guys, I think, you know? Nah, I think they're, I think they're more... They're more. I think they're more comfortable. I think... Look, really? they've got a, yeah, they've got. they've already got a coach that's established Le- himself. Lukaku your... gone. Doesn't want to be yeah. there. Werner, I, I think, doesn't want to be there. Then you've got the, the, the centre-backs that have gone. Christensen, Rudiger, who was, wow, what, what a season yeah, Rudiger had. That's a lot. Christensen, that's Christensen a lot. Rudiger, gone. Alonso, near enough, gone. Kante, picking up injuries. Kovacic, yeah. picking up injuries. I, I think they've got a lot of work to do, Z. Yeah. Yeah, when you put it that way, when... But I, I like... I like Werner. I like... I like Havertz. I like those players that they've bought from Germany. You look, Werner hasn't set the league alight. But again, his link up play is not is not awful. It's been good. It's been good enough. Havertz in the false nine that we've seen. Havertz um, has been nice. I like but, it. I, I, I like it a lot. But I think Chelsea they have they have something there. Look, they've got a system, they've got Thomas Tuchel knows what he wants to play, how he wants his players to play. I think that Lukaku signing has just Pulled him back a bit, Thomas Tuchel, in terms of who he who he's going to sign next. He I don't think that make... was his signing. I don't think that was his signing. You don't think? See, I, I I definitely don't think Lukaku was his first choice. Um, you know, it was who was his first choice last season, man? There was another big boy striker. Oh, my mind's gone blank now. Haaland. Haaland was their first choice, but obviously Haaland wasn't going to go to Chelsea. I think Lukaku was just one of those ones. We need a striker. We need a big name because Lukaku hasn't looked right. He hasn't even Lukaku Tuchel hasn't even tried to make him fit or around play around him. He's just dropped him. Yeah, like he's just dumped him. He's not even brought him back. Um, TFS top football show shout out. TFS says Mourinho <laughs> gave Pepper a seven year two hundred k a week. Do you know what I mean? Now so, I know why they hate why they hate her. Exactly. <laughs> Adrian comes back. He says, yeah, she's been there a long time. She was pivotal in stopping the Shumani purchase last year and going for Sal Niguez instead. So, you know I mean? That just shows you. Uh, is that true, though? Is that well, true? They, was well, Shumani they, ever going to join Chelsea? Uh, yes, because uh, one of my good mates had um, Julien Laurent on one of his shows who's very connected to all things French football. French, and he yeah, said, yeah. And he said, he said, he said, he said yeah, he said Shumani, Chelsea had done the most groundwork for Shumani, but then stopped for whatever reason. And then Liverpool came in and thought they had it sassed. And then Madrid came and gazumped everyone after the Mbappe debacle. Yeah. So, do you know what I mean? 
But listen, we could chat on loads and loads and loads, man. I've taken way too much of your time. I really, really appreciate you coming on, my brother. We've got one last super chat for you. One last super chat for you. Salah, Salih Ahmed says, will City buy to replace Bernardo Silva if he leaves? What do you I think? don't think they will. I don't think they will, no. I think they've got... Grealish, you know, Foden. Yeah, Grealish, Foden, Mares that can play there. I don't think any of those are leaving anytime soon. So I don't think they will certainly... I don't. I, I think they've got priority positions in holding midfield. Calvin Phillips. They've got a left oh. they want to get. We didn't yeah. get a chance to speak on that. Calvin Phillips looks like, again, another one that's dead nailed on because that yeah. my Man City guy says he's even bought property uh, in the area. Yeah, sure, Easy. Yeah. So that, that suggests that that's nailed on as well. What do you think about that one? It's a, it's a funny one. I think I, I, w- I wouldn't think Pep Guardiola would would want him. It, I think it's don't. a funny one. Yeah, I think it's a funny one. I, I'm not a big fan of the player. I haven't seen I haven't seen him produce quality games week in week out. But then again, kind of holding midfielder produce quality games playing under Bielsa at Leeds the, the way they play football. Um, so Guardiola seen something in Calvin Phillips, um, but. I think they'll get that over the line. I think they're prepared. They're, I'm being told they're preparing a bid for Calvin Phillips um, to get that over the line soon. And I think the player, the, not many players say no to Guardiola. So I think that mm. will get over the line. And then, yeah, I just I can't see them replacing Bernardo Silva this this summer. Um, Gagan says, good man, Grizz, keep working. Thank you very much. I appreciate the support, bro. This is probably be the last super chat of the night. El Drago says, everyone talking about uh, ETH giving Martial, Donny, Rashford confidence, but the young... Needs it the most after a horrible time in Barca. Three seasons, four managers. Mm-hmm. Great point. Great point. Great yeah, point. Yeah, think... He's gone through a lot, hasn't he, at Barca? I'm yeah, sure maybe, he, maybe he does need to go back to his, his old manager and, and find his form. Because he hasn't been great at Barcelona. I think his, his season... It, I was looking at his stats from last, last season. It was 47 games. And I think it was like nine goals... nine No, five goals and four assists. Not great. That's not great for Barca. Not great for Barca. So I think Barcelona would put their hands up and take what Manchester United have offered. So there's a reason why they've reached a verbal agreement, I believe. Wow, 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 wow. Exciting times, exciting week already, a couple of weeks. Um, people in the chat, there's still over 400 of you in here. You lot are mad. Love the support. Wow. Appreciate your time. Um, please make Cheers. sure you like and subscribe if you haven't already. Well, actually, you would have subscribed because it's subscriber only. Like the stream and make sure you go over and support my brother right here. I'm really crap in terms of putting links in descriptions, but I'm going to make sure I do that. I'm going to put Z's uh, Twitter handle, his Twitch handle, everything else, but let people know where they can find you, Z. Yeah, so Twitter is ZShanXZ. You can find me on Twitter and then Twitch is Z Mergers. So Z M E R G E R S. We can well I stream on Twitch. I might make a YouTube channel soon. So but yeah, love being on Grizz, man. Appreciate, appreciate it. My brother, it's been a pleasure, and hopefully it's not the it's not the it's not the last time. It's the first time, but it won't be the last time. If the people want it, we will collab again and again and again. As I said. Make sure you go and support the brother doing great, great work. I will put all his socials in the description. Um, you know, you guys know that I'm not all good at all that kind of stuff. You know, just about, <laughs> you know what I mean? Set all this shit up, man. Come on, you know how I operate. But people, you need to help me with this YouTube set. I like the microphone. Oh, yeah, I don't even know if it works. I just, it just looks good. I don't even know if it's doing anything. You know what I mean? Oh, it's like, it? Yeah, it the light's good. on. <laughs> I the like lights it. on. I paid a lot of money for it, so I'm hoping he's doing the business. But people you, say it works. About though, is that what's that at the back? Is that a Liverpool poster? Oh, well, come on, man! Is come it? On, man. Yeah, man. What are you saying? What are you going to say? I thought there'd be more. I thought there'd be more Liverpool. I thought there'd be the no. scarf. No, the I'm looking frames. I thought the thing is, the <laughs> thing is, the thing is, you'd be. I don't know if you know, but I've only been in this game for a few months. So I've just I, I made my YouTube account like in November. People, people will know, and. Uh, by the grace of God, the support has been mad. So I, I'm actually streaming from my conservatory. So like normally I've got my PlayStation right in the back there, but I've moved it because people think that okay. I'm just a lazy bum. So I'm actually in the process of making myself a nice little studio. Not professional, but something a bit more, as you said, Liverpool-based. But because I don't want to be a predominantly Liverpool channel, I don't want to make it like too it, Liverpool yeah. fired everywhere. So I, you, yeah, I like yeah. talking about Liverpool. I like talking about all clubs, as you can see. Me and you yeah, spoke like one hour twenty five minutes on 
on Man United, on yeah. Chelsea. Do you know what I mean? So, but listen, I've got to let you go because I know your time is precious. Thank you so much, my brother. We will catch up very soon. Um, nice. People in the chat, like the stream on your way out if you haven't already. Um, yeah, man, Blue Yeti, man. They're saying class. Yeah, bro, this cost me 100 and something, man. I don't even know, man. I'm going to... Um, make my money back on it but listen appreciate the love appreciate the support i'm gonna hit the outro i'm not even gonna hit outro i'm gonna say out of here take care peace see you later guys take care